But let's get to it. And today I have one of the greats. He's the most capped nine in history for the All Blacks. He's played over 150 games for the Highlanders. And he's had a real journey. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. It is the man himself, Aaron Smith. Welcome, Nuggy. Thanks for coming on, bro. Cheers, bro. Awesome to be here and uh, can't wait. How's isolation been? Yeah, we're on day uh, five. Um, last couple of days have been pretty tough, but um, yeah, mate, it is what it is. The hardest part's just, uh, I think when you're away at rugby, you're busy and you're kind of locked into something. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, when I call home, all I want to do is be there and it's been pretty tough, but um, trying to fill my times with things like this, connect with people and, um, you know, just do what I can. Uh, yeah, I've been training pretty hard. Uh, I've got a big TV behind me. I play a lot of PlayStation uh, when I'm not doing much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but um, Mrs. got me on a few jobs, planning for our wedding in January. So, um, organising uh, suits and alcohol and catering, uh, it's interesting. So, trying to keep myself busy, but, um, yeah, it is, it is tough, mate. So, are all the boys in isolation with you at the moment? How's that work? Yeah, we're all in uh, one hotel and um, it's pretty serious. So we got here, um, we're in our own bubble. We tested negative every week in Australia, like pretty casual, you know, like following rules, signing in places. And then we get here, it's like keep two metres, masks on, um, don't go near each other. Our lobby's quite thin, so like they're like stay apart. It was real serious when we got here. This guy yeah. in the Air Force, things like stay apart, keep your distance. Oh, man. Uh, I got in trouble the first second day. I, I, um, our nutritionist got in the lift with me. And when we got to the ground floor, they had a guy waiting there, like, you two have broken COVID rules, sharing a lift. And, oh, yeah. that's a warning. And I was like, God. So, and it was our nutritionist's fault. And I said, <laughs> she jumped in with me. I couldn't really stop her. But, so, yeah, we've, we've had a few messages from my manager, like, just follow the rules, boys. Um, but it's been great. Food's awesome. Um, coffee's good. So there's not much. The food is awesome. And uh, you can order water and Coke Zero as an LMP at any time, sort of one with every meal. And um, yes, we've got a pretty good view. Our hotel's mean. So um, we can't really complain, mate. So um, it's just the time, bro. You just, the days drag. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I bet. And what's camp been like? Obviously, um, the season was successful. You won everything that you could have, but um, with New Zealand fans and New Zealand media, no one's ever happy. And it probably wasn't the year that the All Blacks are expected of. So how is the camp and what's it been like? It's been a good good year, mate. A lot of new guys and we've got a new coaching group as well. So it's been uh, really, really fun, to be honest. Yeah. Um, real challenging. It was like a India Tour slash World Cup going to Australia. Um, but yeah, I think it just that looking back at it and there, we've just had moments and games where if we nailed that, we do change perception of how good we were or perceived. But um, hopefully the Aussies, Aussies and Argies don't score 70 odd points and steal the Tri Nations. Yeah. Uh, I'll be watching that game pretty closely. But, um, you know, for us on and off the field, I think we've grown a lot this year. And I, I swear and, and, and I hope that people believe that we can only get better from this too. So, that's a scary proposition and uh, I have full faith that our leadership group learned a lot and the young players we introduced from what we were said enjoyed the environment and uh, we tried to make them feel as welcome as possible and feel like they had a voice and could add to the environment. But um, yeah, we just, you know, we played some quality sides, you know, Aussie and Argy were up for games and really happy we won the bled, bled means so much to us and um, after a little bit of a shaky start in wellies, um, we uh, played two awesome games and um, showed what we were about. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it is what it is, mate. But as you said, we all expect the All Blacks to go really well. And, uh, yeah, it probably wasn't up to par with our standard, to be honest. Yeah, exciting times in the future, though, by the sounds of that. Got the environment humming and um, got a lot of young boys blooded this year, eh? So it's a... It's Jeez, a they are young, moment. mate. They are hey? young. <laughs> they are young, bro. <laughs> Callum Grayson... Uh, that was you, like, mate, yeah. bro. Oh, I didn't make the All Blacks when I was 20, though. Yeah. That's, like, different. Like, they're young, man, and it's just, yeah. like... 
I sat with Callum Grayson in there and he was just like piling back this food. And I was in the morning, I was like, how heavy did you weigh? He was like, nah, I was light. I was like, hey, how does that work? Like he ate every rib in sight. We went to this rib joint. He ate every rib and chicken wing he could get sure. and extras. And I was like, cracking up. Like, go kid, eat it up. <laughs> Still light, just burns it off. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. But anyway, let's go back to the start for you. Obviously, um, one thing I enjoy is hearing about how people grew up and I know you've got an interesting journey. Grew up in Fielding, small town, it's a farmer town. But um, yeah, mate, great upbringing. Had everything we needed, a river, a rugby field and a BMX track when I was younger. So I was pretty happy and, uh, you know, just had a normal uh, Kiwi upbringing, backyard cricket and rugby and touch. I had a field behind me, so... Used to go there with the old man. And, um, you know, I just literally followed my dad everywhere. Eh? So I was quite lucky. He was a sociable character, man. Um, played twilight cricket, social rugby. And uh, I just followed him. I was the ball boy or uh, cricketer. Um, and just, yeah, loved the changing room vibe. Um, he enjoyed a beer. So I sort of grew up in that culture of not elite sport, but... Yeah of uh, just loving competing, playing sport for fun. And obviously they enjoyed having a beer and, you know, I had to go through with my dad. So um, it was awesome. So when did you take rugby? When did you start playing rugby? When did you start making it serious? Oh, I played, uh, you know, rugby like everyone from five years old and um, bare feet rugby back then. So standing on the lines crying. Yeah. <laughs> just and on frosty mornings. Just... <laughs> <laughs> hating life yeah. um but you know yeah i was allergic to tackling back then god i was uh, a <laughs> as hell so uh Were if i couldn't then? chase down and if i couldn't chase them down and grab them there was no uh hidden spokes back then but <laughs> you know i loved i loved rugby and uh i was quick when i was younger so i played on the wing um scored a lot of tries on the end of the line but you know it wasn't anything too serious but I was probably a lot better at cricket during my sort of teenage years. And then right. uh, the old man just sort of said, um, you know, I can't keep taking you to cricket and rugby training. Can you kind of pick one? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And um, pretty much in year 11, I trialed for the first 15 as a bit of a joke. I got like six minutes in the trial. All the big, gun big guns are off. Me and uh, Mitchell Croswell and Sam Wylock got like the last – yeah, five or six minutes. Yeah. And, you know, what it, we were like 15 going on 16 in our year 11. And then the next day on the notice board, they had like the first 15, like, oh, yeah, they named the team and that. And then I walked, um, yeah, I walked past this halfback who was six form, fit as, his name was Aaron Haynes. And, you know, I, I thought he was going to be the halfback and he just didn't say anything to me, flunked me. True. Hainsy, what's up? And he's like, nothing. And then I was like, oh, and the boy's like, get over to the notice board. And I was like, oh, wow, what? And then me and Mitchell and Sam and year 11's making the first thing was a bit of a big deal. And I'm bloody, you know, 62 kgs, like, oh, no, I've got to play first of three rugby. <laughs> but you must have gone pretty oh. good in that five minutes. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, I think they were just sort of, from what I gathered later on, they were seeing if, um, Haynes could play the way they wanted. And, um, yeah, they had a seven-form halfback that played, and then I ended up playing first five that year oh, true. Um, just because I could sort of pass the ball a long way and kick a little bit. And um, we just had big Lucy's, mate. So it was just all runners off 10, and I'd just give it to – we had Chris Walker, George Wylock, and Nick Croswell. So a bit of a throwback names, but yeah. they were man-childs at school and the old good old second year seventh. So, um <laughs> Chris Walker was a walking uh, walking beast and then George Wallach and that were class. So I either ran one, two cuts with Adam Wallach and yeah. then just get game line or I'd throw a miss pass to our fast back. So I, I, I had a good ride that year. Um, I always remind Colsey, we beat Wellington College in fielding for sure. the top 16. <laughs> and young Colsey there with his... Uh, was he playing? Beatles, <laughs> yeah, Beatles hair, haircut, socks down, throwing it in. And now, and now he always sees that fielding crowd. With him. <laughs> so uh, it was a good memory. And uh, beating Colsey in my fifth form was pretty cool. And I remember seeing him and I was like, well, everyone knew who he was. And um, yeah, so my uh, first of the days were awesome. And I obviously got to 
um, play with some good players. Yeah. And you mentioned your pass there, having a long pass. How did you get such a good pass at that age? Well, it was probably more when I was a teenager. My dad had kind of said, you're not going to go very tall. You need to, because I was on the wing then and I was just sort of quick. But everyone had started growing in there and I didn't. So um, he's like, should we um, start passing? And then we started a passing thing around like the old story I maybe said is like I heard is the hitting the wheelie bin every day. So when I was about 12, started hitting the sticker on the wheelie bin every day, both hands though. So I had to do it. And then at night when he got home from work, I'd have to come out and do it in front of him. Yeah. Just to more my left hand than anything. He didn't care about my right. Yeah. And then um, it progressed to like, you know, there's a fence post that was further away. And then it was like, he'd start catching balls. And then, yeah, we'd go to the park. And I remember one summer we just, when I was about 14, going for the, oh, playing Colts. Yeah, we were passing a lot and just kicking. And I was trying to be a goal kicker then, which is a failure. <laughs> Waste of time, really. Should have just stuck to box kicking. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there were days there, yeah, my dad would have caught you know, hundreds of balls every day. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a cool, it was our little thing. We didn't really talk much when it happened. But, yeah, he, he didn't really know either. But he just knew that doing a lot of it would help. But him and my mum were great. Eh? Mum was always like, you can be whatever you want. Dream big, like, literally every day or everything happens for a reason. You yeah. can dream big. But my dad just caught everything. And as I said around, I'd go to their club rugby games or touch trainings and that, like just thrived in that and loved it and just wanted to be one of them guys, you know. But yeah, it was, um, I don't know, mate. I um, I love passing. It's a passion. I still do it, try to do it every day or when I'm in camp, every yeah. day I do some passing. And it's just, for me, no better feeling than throwing a, you know, a perfect spiral. And when it comes out of my fingers, uh, yeah, it's weird. So I'd rather put someone away for a try off a nice pass than score a try. It's a real weird one for me. Yeah. How good. And so do you think you're passing to try and be a professional rugby player or was it more of a just something you like to do? It was nothing about trying to be a pro. It was just yeah. trying to... My dad just was like, halfbacks have to have the nicest pass and you're not going to make it by your physical gifts, son. So you need to have skill and... uh I can see the game well um, and, and see mismatches and see holes and stuff around hitting people, you know. So I was quite lucky. So that, I think playing first five in my fifth form really dialed that in around like you got a bit more room hitting guys and manipulating space and that. But I think, yeah, I remember him saying that like you're not going to make it because of your physical gifts. You need to be the best at skill and your skills and He's like, you just got to have the best pass to make it. And, and, and it stuck with me. And I think it was a throwaway drunk comment, but <laughs> I um, took it pretty serious. Like, okay, well, if I'm going to have any chance at playing at a, at a decent level, like I didn't make any rec teams when I was younger until I was six, uh, six form here. So, um, yeah, and I think little moments like that. Like I remember in, in Turbo's Academy when I was 19, Jason O'Halloran's like, Nuggy, if you start tackling, mate, you'll have a rounded game. Yeah. Because, like, you've just got to make the odd tackle. You don't have to tackle. Yeah. But you've got to make tackles when you need to. You've got to, you're a great communicator at the ruck. You see the game. Your attack's good. But you just, yeah, I didn't want to tackle. So there's key moments I remember. That was one of them. Like, my dad was like, you need to have the best pass to play at any level. And, and then Miss Jason O'Halloran around. If you start making, want to make tackles, um, you'll enjoy it. And I really enjoy trying to tackle now. Not yeah. like I do a heap, but I don't, I enjoy that. I actually get a lot of confidence on my attack when I get a tackle in early. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're a vicious tackler yourself, eh? <laughs> so <laughs> you love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> the boys love the D. <laughs> nah, I don't play rugby for that, but I do enjoy it now. Fair enough. And then, obviously, my first memory of you was at the New Zealand under-19s camp. So you'd obviously progressed to that level um, to be in the frame for the New Zealand under-19s team. And 
I remember you coming into that camp, bubbly, friendly guy, even got me over to my, my, your room for a haircut. You were into all that sort of stuff. So that's what I remember about you, like um, real keen, real keen to learn. And um, yeah, how did you find that camp? Yeah, I think that was the, it was a cool experience. I obviously didn't make uh, NZ schools or anything, and uh, I made hurricanes and that, but going to 19s, like, I remember signing a five grand contract with the turbos yeah. at 19. Yeah. Uh, signed up for my apprenticeship, and then I got the call to go to 19s trials, and it was just like buzzing. But when I got there, mate, like, uh, I think we did MFITs for a testing, and I remember that's when I found out how far off I was. Like, I remember watching you and Kurt Baker do the 400 and like racing. <laughs> and it was like, we were like 50 meters behind. And I thought, holy. And then 10 minutes later, we do the 1.5. <laughs> and that was like watching the Olympics, you and Crut run it. So it was, uh, and I was way off, mate. I remember I was at the 19s trials. We did the 3K, I think maybe. And Ben Afiaki was like just behind me. So I knew then mate I was uh I played all right but again that was kind of the year I said I didn't want to tackle and uh still didn't want to tackle at that point and I was unfit mate and I was 70 old kgs skinnies weren't that great um and then we had that ranking board remember they were just so ruthless they just had like rankings and everything speed yeah. bench yeah. squat um like they had everything tackling like and I was like three or four and everything. Okay? So like Matthew, Maddie, uh, Maddie Cameron, Wayne Naliafa and... Um, Grayson. And Grayson. Grayson was 20s. He didn't play 19s. He just came out of nowhere that right. oh, wait. Yeah, but I just remember I was the worst at that. And then I was like, holy. And then when I went back to the turbos, I really... I talked to the trainers when I missed out. It was pretty guttering. I talked to the trainers like, I need to wake up here like... What do I need to do? And that's where it sort of started. Uh, um, like I had a really good club season after that and started getting, I was doing boxing in the morning to get fitter. Um, yeah. Really started focusing on my weights. And then I got injured, mate. I got a um, hernia. I, I, I tried to score a try trying to be bloody the man and reach out and I popped a hernia. Yeah. So that really put me back at the end of 07. But um Renz was the turbos coach and he said, look, get get right, get fit and uh, I'll give you an honest crack at 20s because the coaches weren't even looking at me. They just pretty much handed him the book of the 19s team. So that was my goal then. So I just fell in love with the um, turbos trainer and um, just tried to make 20s really, which was the goal. And then how did you do that? What what sort of, how did you start to love tackling? How did you get so fit? What? What was the what was the secret? Any secrets? <laughs> Teach me how to tackle. No real secrets. Yeah, the tackling was more of a um, mentality thing, I think. Like, started played club rugby, playing with men, and started. Um, I remember I, I lived with my mate Mitchell Croswell. He's a good necky man, and uh, yeah, he's just like, bro, just. I don't know if I'm always going to make a tackle, but if I'm just going hard and see what happens, you know. Yeah. So I started that, trying that, and. You know, off the left-hand side scrums, you're like, you mark first hands, you know. So, one, three cuts and that. And club players and that aren't, like, that deadly. So, I was, like, getting my head in the spokes and make the odd tackle. And then, you know, all the strength. I was, I got up to maybe 78 kgs, sort of 08. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I think I, I put a bit of weight on when I was injured. So, then I got fit. And then, uh, yeah, but I was doing a lot of extra running stairs and... Back then, the big one was like hill repeats. So I did a lot of that. And um, I was just really lucky. I got, I wouldn't say I was any stronger than that, but I really started enjoying tackling, which really made me, when I, when I got a tackle in early, I found out in the game, my running game would come alive because I'd had a hit. Yeah. You know? So for me, I always try to look for a tackle early. I'll like fill in the line, get a tackle in, and then I'm like, you hope you get a little bit of a ding because you sort of, get in a tackle where you know you're not going to really win the momentum but yeah it's just a key part of my game and I know when I don't do it I go missing for a little while but and then just yeah getting fit I had a really good 20s trial though I'll be honest so um yeah I I I, I had a real good relationship with um Trent and he played 10 that day and for me and my team and um we had a real big pack and um 
yeah, I just I had a good trial and um, Maddie Cameron didn't, and I and because he was all that like with the ranking system, he was better physically in that. But I don't know if it was Renz who saw something or gave me a bit more of a shot. But no one was beating Grayson at the time. He was stronger than everyone. Yeah. and look like Superman <laughs> and we used to call him I used to call him Superman he had a body yeah. of like Achilles I was like who the hell is this guy <laughs> and you remember back then he was the only guy in our squad besides Zach who played super he played yeah. super rugby that year yeah and played for Auckland like it was like wow this guy and he he cleaned like 130 at um, 20s camp. I still haven't seen anyone do that. <laughs> Honestly, he's freakish, eh? Like, oh, he, and oh, I just want his body, man. Holy, <laughs> like, he had abs and muscles everywhere. I was like, holy hell. <laughs> but yeah, we had a good ding dong battle at 20s around who started, and yeah, um, yeah, it was Renz played us off, which was a bit of a bugger, and saw me more as an impact role. Yeah. Um, so it was fun, and it. It was the first NZ team I made, mate. So I was so happy. And, mm. you know, the guys like K Pookie and all that were pretty cool. So, um, yeah, and it was good to win. Yeah. How good. And then coming back, you obviously got into the Manawa 2 squad. Was that the same year? Yeah. Yeah. I made two bows, yeah, 2008. And then seven games in, uh, Lottie Rock and Buller. I go to, there was a, they kicked it out. Auckland kicked it out at Eden Park. Yeah, and I just got on, and I point at Lottie like, "Don't throw it in." So he throws it straight at me. I catch it. Daniel Braid tackles me, jackals me, and then I break my leg in the in the ruck. Oh hell! So like, it was a horrific. Yeah, I broke my uh, fibula, dislocated my ankle, ripped my hole. So it was uh, yeah. So I'm saying to Lottie, "Leave it, leave it." They've just shanked this out on the 22. We're on the halfway. I'm like, "Leave it." <laughs> <laughs> he throws it straight at me. And then when I was injured, he came up to me. He's like, if you didn't gave it back, I would have scored. I was like, <laughs> if you didn't pass it, I wouldn't have a broken foot right now. <laughs> so, you know, that was, so then 08 was done too. So yeah. I was doing another, another off season, two in a row with uh, season ending injuries. And it was just a real bummer. Like, yeah, like 08, you know, got my turbos contract finally, made the team. I was getting 20 minutes there and me and Cruden were sort of starting to, me, Cruden and Kurt and Andre were like young academy boys to come into Manawa 2. We were thriving. And that was the year when my injury was nothing like Cruden's. He got cancer that yeah. same week, you know. So we had eight injuries from that. It was a Renfrewly Shield game in Auckland. We ended up losing eight guys that day Jeez. for the year. It was like Brad Knock, our captain, did his Achilles. I broke my leg, crewed and got cancer. It was just bad. Like a hamstring, Johnny did a shoulder. It was just like, yeah, the camp was ruined. And uh, yeah, but that was it. So yeah. And then uh, sort of 2009, the team was a struggle, mate. I just couldn't crack a super. How was it mentally for you to go through those um, injury setbacks? Were you all good? Oh, man, it was um, it was tough because... Um, just wanted to. I was like doing like the three wins programs with the Hurricanes and that, so I could go down for the odd week preseason and then a week in season. So that was really cool, getting in those environments, meeting all those legends, you know. Um, but the injuries really made me doubt um, what if this was for me because sort of being small, I just doubted like if I could physically handle it. And um, I remember thinking like oh, I might chuck it in and just I was nearly doing qualified my hairdressing and I was kind of I had a two-year deal with turbo so I was like do I give up my rehab wasn't going very well my ankle well I wanted it to go quicker but it just the ligaments were that damaged I had to take my time so um but it came all right I just had to I quit hairdressing to just focus on my rehab yeah and when I did that, it was really, it was probably the best thing. You know what it's like, that assistant trainer becomes your best mate when you're injured. So our trainer at the time, we just were doing everything we could to just just break it up. But um, there were big doubts around, I, was just, I wasn't enjoying rugby because I couldn't survive a season at that time, you know. So it was pretty tough, but 
yeah, the next two years were really tough for me in the sense of I thought I was the man and I wasn't I wasn't fit enough and strong enough and you know, I thought no nine and ten that I'd just like, oh yeah, my potential will get me picked for super rugby and that'd be it. But it didn't happen, eh? So two thousand and nine I like played all right for the turbos, but I was still a bit chubby from my injury, still st- scared to get tackled at this time yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah but i think 2010 summer is when i really just sort of i'll give it one more crack um it was a, it was a rough year for the turbos we nearly got booted from the comp uh, tasman was the same weren't they yeah, yeah we were in there as yeah well. yeah it was a pretty tough time for new zealand rugby and um yeah it was it was just interesting like I needed the contract because I'd quit hairdressing and yeah. um, I signed a deal even though we hadn't confirmed that we'd be there next year. So I was either playing second div or, yeah. or whatever to get that money. But it's true. yeah, it just 2010 was a very lucky year for me. Had an all right minor 10, but Jamie Joe picked me for the Maldives. Yeah. And only because Pity Wepu made the All Blacks. So we were only two or three Maldi halfbacks and I was just lucky to sneak in and that was, uh, I'll be honest with you, Chris Smiley breaking his cheekbone was the luckiest thing that could ever happen to me, to be honest, because I got to start in the Barbars game. or get. I played 70 minutes in the Barbarians game. Yeah. And then I started the next two games against uh, England A and Ireland A. And, um, like, I really, that was, that, was my, that was my chance. And I knew it was my last chance. Yeah. Um, and... Um, yeah, that was that was sort of it, and I just tried my best. And Jamie Joe, you know, fulfilled my dream. My dream was never to make the All Blacks. My dream was just to play Super Rugby. Yeah. And at the time, I was like battling for wider squad contracts or the next guy. And he rang me round two of Mitre Ten uh, and said, "You know, I'm going to full contract you for the Highlanders." And I was like, "I'm, I'm your man." And Jamie Joe's contract talks don't go very long. <laughs> it was like, you, I've got, I'll give you two days to make a decision, but you're one of the first guys I've called. So, yeah, hope to hear from you soon. Later. <laughs> Bang, hangs up. <laughs> I rung Warren. I was like, well, what do we do? Here? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, because I was at the Blues for the season in 2010. Yeah. Um, me and Ash Dixon and Dan Pryor were the, with the broom cupboard boys, I remember. So we were just in this broom cupboard next to the changing room. True. But um, yeah, it was crack up, man. But, you know, I didn't play a game at all. Albie Matheson made the All Blacks that year. He played every minute pretty much. And he yeah. was on fire, man. He was outstanding then. So um, it was cool to watch and learn. But yeah, same thing. Blues didn't want to offer a contract. And then I rang the Blues because um, I wanted to go back there because I'd, I'd been there in a the season. And they said, oh, we're going to wait till the end of the season to see how you go. And I said, sweet. Jamie Joe's offered me my dream. I'm signing this. Yeah. And gone. Then I'm off the Dunners. How good. And how was that? How was it going down there? Um, I think you were living with Kurt Baker and Jared Hawada, which are a couple of absolute roosters. So oh, it was your first taste <laughs> of super rugby. Oh, mate, it was pretty, it was pretty awesome, mate. Because, uh, you know, we just, you just, uh, that, that's when you know you're playing rugby all year round. So it felt like I was like a pro, you know. So yeah, play turbos, have a month off, then you start your Highlanders preseason stuff, and then you know move down to Dunners, did the preseason. I just it was so cool. It was like yeah, I'm getting paid all year round to play rugby, and I felt like a pro, and it was cool. And going to Dunners was awesome. It was um, yeah, the 2011 was an awesome year. Uh, we lived with Huada and like as you said and Kurt Baker and his partner at the time and we had an awesome we had this pimp pad we had like a um, rooftop kind of um, flat <laughs> so because we got reallocation money they just yeah. sorted it and they said Love it. we had this rooftop place had an elevator like it was mean glass <laughs> everywhere we had our own rooms it was like oh man and it was the party house and we yeah. just like lived it up so um yeah, but it was cool, man. I um, met Wendell, our trainer, and he just, like, really challenged me to, you know, get really fit. And we had Jimmy Cowan, so I had a really awesome time 2011. He was going for the – preparing for the World Cup, so 
he was in the best shape and stuff. So watching him prepare for that was cool. And, um, you know, just get 10 or 15 minutes here after games. And um, I got a couple of starts when he had his all black rest. So uh, it was pretty cool. And, but yeah, I think I, uh, I enjoyed the, uh, the, what Dunedin has to offer off the field too in 2011. So we won four games in a row and then lost uh, eight out of the next 10. So <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, depth of our squad got challenged and yeah. then our bond off the field grew bigger because we were, <laughs> oh, well, train hard, party harder, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Highlanders obviously known for their off field social an- antics. How was it? Was it as much as, as you expected or any stories from those days? No, oh, it was, it was, um, I don't know if it's bad, but it, it wasn't ideal. Looking back at it now, like if we yeah. played a Friday game and we had an eight day turnaround, we'd have a good, you know, we had a good crew of us, me, Nasty, K Puki, Tawada, Kurt Baker, guys yeah. like that, that enjoyed a good time. We were young. So we were about 23, 24, or, you know, 21 to 24, except for Hawada, who was 30, probably. <laughs> um, he's about 40 now, so, yeah. Um, nah, I love you, ho. And then, uh, yeah, we just, so, and Nasi Manu and that. And if we, yeah, if we had a Friday, Saturday, we were on, we were going good. We'd have a good night, you know, and then go again Saturday night and then just sweat it all out. But that was, it was sort of like that back then, like, as long as you're fronted and, you know, I learned after that year, you can't, uh, you know, light the candle at both ends, you know, because physically I was broken more from the alcohol at the end of the year than I was uh, the games, you know. I was only playing 20 minutes a week, 15 yeah. max. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I kind of used that first year as my sort of, you know, the need and <laughs> year. And then 2000, 2011, I remember um, having a beer with Jamie at the end of year do. Yeah. Any uh, another moment in my life where it was a light bulb moment was, uh, you know, I think uh, he goes, Muggy, I think your uh, game is pretty good, but uh, you love the piss too much, mate. And I go, oh, yeah, cool. We're having a beer right now. All good. Um, but if you turn up next year fit and ready to go, um, I'll pick the best halfback for this team. I don't care if Jimmy's won a World Cup or not. I'm going to pick the best, um, the best halfback who I think. So I was like, sweet. Um, and yeah, so that whole summer, watched the World Cup, um, loved that. And then because it was a bigger, bigger break, then we had a bigger preseason. Yeah. So it was like eight weeks before Christmas, then four after, and then the All Blacks came back. And, you know, I just went, that was the, that was, that was the year I really went from like running a 18 one on the yo yo to mid 19s, squatting and benching what I could. And then finally getting my skinnies kind of down and yeah. figuring out that if you have your skinnies right, um, you're able to run longer, train better. And I was able to just play the way I wanted to play for longer, not little patches and bursts. Yeah. I, could, I could just go until I got subbed, really. So that was sort of where I learned that. So Jamie Joe lied. I carved up preseason <laughs> and then he started Jamie game one. I was like, you bastard. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I actually, yeah, we played the Chiefs round one and he started him. Yeah. Jimmy, you know, he, it was all good, but I, I felt like I was, I started all the preseasons. I played well. I felt, I knew the game plan and I was, you know, and then, yeah, I got on really early in the Chiefs game and I, I got a try pretty quickly and I started every game after that, that year. You cracked it. You've done it. Well, to be honest, it was um, just trying to beat Jimmy every week in 212. Yeah. Was, that was the goal. So, um, yeah, I kind of, it was a bit of a whirlwind year. Um, I wouldn't say I played any better or anything, but I was playing a different brand of halfback to others at the time. Yeah. Um, I was just playing fast, clearing the ball, trying to get second touches, um, sniping around the ruck a bit. Yeah, and yeah, as I said, that was sort of when the um, speed of speed of play and the way we were playing at the Highlanders, um, you know, showcased my game. And we had to play quick, and and a and a, and a very blessing in disguise was that was the first year we played on foresight bar, so it just suited me to a T. And 
um, you know, what we were able to start creating from 2012 to sort of leading up to 2015 was sort of all built on the stadium, the culture, and then guys like Ben Smith and Nasi Manu. Um, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. But yeah, like, to, I got, I remember getting named in the uh, All Blacks camp and yeah, it was a shock. Eh? So I was on one of the uh, Saturday, Sunday drinking sessions as we did in the Landers. Yeah. And I got a text to like eight at night or seven at night on a Saturday. And I'm, uh, yeah, thinking, oh, yeah, cool, it's going to be a cool night. And then boom, it's like, hi, Darren Shand here, All Black manager. Um, on Monday, you will be coming into a training camp. So I'm sitting there going, oh my God, <laughs> I need to go to the gym and sweat some stuff out, you know, like, oh, shoot. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, and I'm sitting there on the couch with all the boys, we were, we were having a good time, and they're like, what's happened? And I'm like, just sitting there, just like, oh my God. Yeah. And I just showed them my phone, and it's like, a message from those, like, 5021 numbers, you know, just like, yeah, yeah. it's a group text. And, oh man, I was just like, far out, I'm going in the camp, and then, yeah, like the next two Mondays I went into camp and, um, you know, it was it was crazy. What was it like? Who was good to you and what's, what was it? What was the feeling going in? Oh, man, I um, we went into camp in North Shore. They're like camps two days. We'd just go through attack structures and stuff. And I had Conrad Smith as my, um, as my roomie, so it was quite nice to get a, a nice leader in there. But... Um, yeah, it was a it was a crack up because um I remember sleeping on the Monday night and his room was where the bathroom was. Yeah. So I was like, I needed to go to the toilet, but I, I didn't know um I didn't want to wake him up, you know. I wasn't <laughs> gonna go bursting into his room to get to the bathroom. So I'm like, I remember um yeah, I heard I waited like two hours. I heard him go to the bathroom and then I got up straight after like, oh he's sneaky, sorry. Sweet, and then I like went in. So like, I'm sitting there just like <laughs> freaking out, and then like I need to go to the bathroom, and I'm just sitting there lying there like trying to think of anything, but going to the toilet. And then uh, finally he went, and I just got up, went to the bathroom, and yeah. But that was the first camp, and that was cool. And you know to meet legends of our game, McCaw, Manonu, Carter. But in Wellington, I had Carter as my roomie, and. Uh, I couldn't believe how much the guy could slip. Like, I don't know if he had had a big weekend before it, but <laughs> any time between our training sessions, he was just napping. Oh, yeah. and, and I was just crack. Yeah, and then um, I thought the camps, because the camps, there were five or six players there in each position, so you don't know. But I remember um, Carter was talking to me just before we left on the Monday night, and he's like, oh, I'll see you next week. And I go, hey? And he goes, oh, yeah. Catch you later, kid. And then I was like, what do you mean by that? And then I thought, and I was like, oh, no. And we were talking about attack stuff and plans and that. And yep. he was like, oh, yeah. When you hit me on this, we'll do that. And then this and that. I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, sweet as. And he goes, oh, well, make sure you remember that stuff. And I'll see you next week. And I was like, holy heck. Does that mean I'm in the All Blacks or what or that? And then <laughs> the worst thing was we were playing the Crusaders that week. So I was probably like, that's what he meant. He's just going to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then the next Sunday, the best day of my life happened, you know. How did it come about? Um, yeah, we were just... Um, we had Andrew Hoare, Jose Gear, and Adam Thompson in the team and the Highlanders as well at the time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we were... Um, we were at our hotel and we were just... Just before we were about to leave to go to the airport and... Uh, I saw Andrew Hall leave the room, Ricky, and then I saw Jose leave, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And then, uh, and then my phone rang, and then I was like, "Oh my god, here we go!" Because they said they'd ring you no matter what, like you're yeah. in or you're out, you know. And Jose and that came back pretty coy in that, and I was like, "Damn, what does that mean?" And then Darren Shandy just cut straight to the chase. Hello, Aaron. Um, uh, I'll get. I'll be quick. And I was like, oh, here we go. And I am like, my heart's beating. I'm shaking, going, yeah. I'm going to cry if you say no here. And then he's like, uh, you've made the team. Um, you'll fly up tonight. Um, see you tonight. Congratulations. And I was like, oh, my God. And 
I just remember just shaking like makes me a bit uh, thing now, but yeah, just like oh my god, a punk kid from Fielding can crack it, you know? I've done it, and uh, yeah, it was um, yeah, it was surreal, bro. Just the best part was ringing my parents next. I rang I rang my um, mum and dad. They obviously I told them what was happening. They said they'd ring me no matter what this morning, yeah. and I'll ring you when I know. And I um, rang my mum and kind of thought it'd be funny to play a bit of a prank. I was like, oh, you know, nah, I didn't make it, mum, and it's okay. And she's like, oh, I love you. doesn't matter. You'll be there next year. And I go, no, 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 I made it, mum. And then she was happy. <laughs> and then when I rang my dad, it was a bit weird, like I rang my dad. It was a dumb prank, stupid <laughs> thing. Young, what an ego. Really special moment. And I've like, pranked my mum. What, what an idiot. I, always, I, I haven't said sorry for that, but oh, God. Dumb joke, and then I rang my old man and just said to him, "Yeah," and uh, he went pretty quiet. And ah, uh, yeah, but man, it was just it was awesome, and um, all that work, and uh, yeah, it paid off. And then the debut, how was how did that come about? Yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. Just um, you know, they named the team on the Tuesday in the change room before yeah. you train. So I'm sitting there, pretty whippers in camp, and there's only me and him. So I'm thinking, sweet. I'm, like, I'm, I'm on the bench no matter what here, sweet as. So I'm day burn this weekend. And then um, they're like, oh, they named the team on Tuesday morning. So put your boots on, jerseys on, GPS, sit down and wait. And it was pretty serious. Everyone's sitting there. And I'm like, okay, this is how they do it in the All Blacks. And then, boom, Karen Reed, number eight, number nine, Aaron Smith. And I was like, oh, no. Wow. Oh, no. Because <laughs> impacting the game and starting way different, eh? You know, yeah. like, yeah. Impact, you just sort of come on whatever's the flow of the game and, like, you know, rip in. But starting, you've got to, like, build the game, get it going, and, oh, man. And then, but Pity was great. He helped me all week, and it was just a, it was an amazing ride, amazing week. And uh, I just remember game day being so scared to um, get injured or do something too much. Like, yeah. it sounds ruthless, but Andrew Hall all week was saying all these things, like, you're not an all-black to you play a game. And, uh <laughs> okay, yeah, and then like he's like, you don't want to be one of those guys that who's a or one test or two tests, and I was like, okay, man, I get it, like, yeah, don't be that guy. And then like game day, and at the warmer, I was like, I did like jog around, and then in the hucker, even in the hucker, I didn't go hard because I was like, I don't want to pull a calf or something silly. <laughs> so like, I was not, I wasn't like, I wasn't excited about the anthem or the hucker because I was just so scared about getting hurt, like. I remember in the warm up, and then as soon as the kickoff happened, I was like, it's done. I'm an all black now. And then I remember running up the field from Dan kicking the ball, going, I need to warm up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like, uh oh, oh. And I remember like thinking, like, oh, God. But um, nah, it was, yeah, the first test was a bit of a, and the second and the third were great, but. <laughs> yeah it was just really weird like other stories people had but mine was that like I was so scared of like getting hurt even before more the game I, I just trotted around man like yeah. all blacks warm ups are chill you do you do everything and then 10 minutes to go you come in and do passing ways tackles go in so it's like all self- it's all up to you yeah. it's all self driven so I just trotted around like <laughs> can't get hurt avoiding contact or anyone Oh, that's classic. And then but back... Yeah, like... Oh. <laughs> oh, here you go. Nah, that was, that was... I just feel bad telling people, oh, you know, put in the jersey on. Nah, man, I was so scared to <laughs> get hurt that I didn't do anything to get hurt. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And then back to your Landers career. Obviously, 150 games. That's a massive, massive achievement. Yeah. You've been there for ages playing real good footy what any highlights of your career that you're keen to share other than the 215 final <laughs> oh, great great game um no just the landers is special to me obviously they gave me a shot and i love i love the way we play we play on a stadium yeah and it promotes a positive brand of rugby so um you know, at least I know half my games of rugby are going to be with a dry ball so it's pretty exciting to know every year um, and you're always going to get people's best at our stadium because everyone gets excited about playing there. I don't yeah. know what it's like for you coming down to play, but you know it's going to be awesome game. Same. 
and then um, yeah, just just lucky they I couldn't have made the All Blacks without the Highlanders, and I've always tried to pride myself on being an All Black that. Um, tries to play well at Super. I didn't want to be one of those All Blacks that just use Super Rugby to build for the All Blacks. Yeah. So I've always tried to come and fit, lead lead through example and, and, and always try to get better. And um, in the last few years, it's been great. Just I had Ben Smith to follow for years. Eh? So I was just as trying to compete with him every day. He was my like, other guy, you know. So yeah. my whole, my most, well, this was my first year without him, but other than that, I was just following his lead, and he's such a great leader and a great man. So um, he led the way through standards and actions and that, and uh, let his talking happen on the field. You know, mm. wasn't a big talker, but he grew into an amazing captain. And I just followed him. And the last couple of years, obviously, just been able to build that leadership role with Ash. But um, yeah, Super Rugby is where you make your money or make your gold, eh? Because that's where, like, you don't. All Blacks, you, you're behind a Rolls Royce, or you, you, you're behind a great team, you know. But I reckon at Super, you get a better feeling because you earn everything you get, you know. And at, at the Highlanders, we do, you know. So anything we get, every time we make the playoffs, like, um, you know, I probably like we've made the playoffs every year since 2014. Like, sure. One of the years we snuck in, but yeah, like as a team of misfits from all over we, we we battle high above our expectations you know and I think the times where we've had great teams we've gone far and sometimes and in 2015 we got a little bit of luck but we had a we had three or four guys that had the best seasons of their life mm. and um and we got on a roll when it counted and that was uh you know and as as I've played this is you know, as I played so much Super Rugby, it's so hard to win. So, yeah. it is, you know, too, how hard it is. And when you won your one, I'm sure it was the same feeling of just, like, relief, uh, amazingness. But, like, to get even in a final, you have to be at home or in New Zealand, you know. It, it's so it's such a hard thing to win, eh? Yeah. Well, how did you guys do it? How did you do it away from home? Well, we were lucky that, I mean, in New Zealand, like, We've the two times we, we made the semis were both semis were at Joburg, you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's just so hard. And even if you won that game, you're coming home to a New Zealand final, like yeah. it's impossible to do, you know. But twenty fifteen we were lucky that the Tars were carving up. So we'd we'd finish second behind the Hurricanes, yeah. who smoked us both times we played them that year. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, <for> those ones. <laughs> Jamie Joe Jamie Joe had a plan though. He's like we only have to beat the Hurricanes once and he rested me, Muller and Bender the second game in Napier. Yeah. And he goes, if we're going to win this comp because you guys had lost one game and however many, he's like, we're going to beat them in a final if, if, we, if we make it. And I was sitting there in the leadership meeting like, I want to play, TJ, what yeah. are you on about? I'm a, Napier's my hometown. Like, I'm from the Bay. My Maldi side is, all my family is there. Yeah. And he's like, stay home, train hard and get ready because we're going to Africa and that. And um, it was a great plan from him and suicide for us, but it's what our team needed. And um, yeah, and then we just, you know, we played the Chiefs at home in a quarter, which is probably still one of the most memorable games for me. Um, we had a great night. Waisaki ripped up and we won at home, a quarter at home. And then we went to Sydney. And I remember sitting on Instagram on the Monday and I saw um um what's that sixer's name for them? Um Pogeta. Oh yeah the, the African dude. Yeah. He put up an Instagram post and I printed it out. Uh it had a photo of him in the gym with the boys and he goes, can't wait for the next two week uh Blues Brothers here we come finals. And I was like, oh so they're already in the final boys. <laughs> so I printed it out. Oh wow. You know, they had all these other articles like Sydney Herald and that, like, oh, Waratah's birth to make another final. Um, you know, they were, and I was just like, and Jamie Joe was the same as that. We just built it up. Yeah. And we just built the same. We, we smoked the Tars, smoked them. 38 10, I think. Yeah. You know, we just absolutely, game plan was outstanding. And then it was all about, yeah, coming home to, have a crack at the hurricanes really that was our way and our plan and we had a 
good plan that night to try and beat yous and uh and and, and we uh we we got lucky so you took those and you um and you run <laughs> that was some game and, away, that i remember that the oh, speed of it and the intensity of it was just next level obviously i never played in have you watched the first go watch the first 30 minutes you probably don't want to but it's like it's a free-for-all it's, no one wants yeah. to kick a penalty out or kick it we just quick tap everything both teams <laughs> quick throws huh. you guys never took a line out you just threw everything in and then yeah. um scutter in the bus and yourself and oh yeah it was just you know um as i said you just big moments and you just uh Waisaki and Lima and um, Malala had had nights, and then Elliot had a night. You know, like we just and I'll take it, man. And and I've I've played a lot of Highlander rugby now, and and it's still right up there, best yeah. moment ever. And it's so hard to win Super Rugby. So big respect to anyone that can do it. Yeah. Did he score it? Yeah. Didn't the Fimo <laughs> said yeah. <laughs> I think slow mo actually helped it because that fast motion I thought he dribbled it, but yeah, it didn't um, slow mo helped it. <laughs> he didn't look convinced when he got up, so <laughs> yeah. but obviously, yeah, the TMO gave you know, it so rest is history. It's funny how perception show it. Like I don't even think of that because it's yeah. like it's a try. Yeah. <laughs> but for you guys, it's like that was the moment. But that's fair. I've, I've you know I've been on the other end of that stuff too. No, nah, I. I I'm like that the same. I, I wouldn't even notice that during the game. It's more after the game when you look back and yeah. you start dwelling on moments and you're like, oh, oh. Uh, was it a try? Or could we have scored that? And you start counting all these things. You're like, sure, we were robbed. But in reality, yeah. in the game, you come off that field and you know that you haven't won that game and you've been beaten by yeah. that team, so. no, We had a good day that day. Sorry, mate. You won it the next year. It's all good. Yeah, yeah that's all good. One each. We'll, we'll take it. And then let's go back to your All Blacks, 97 caps. That's massive. 95 points. You're on a race to 100. I, I, I kicked a conversion somewhere. Did so you? I must be on like, I have, yeah. Was I, um, it 97? 30, is it 97 points, 95 caps? Well, whatever it is, it's an odd, well, you know, it's a, yeah. there's a two somewhere. Um, <laughs> Bodie twisted his ankle. Uh, late in a bleeder slow and he's like, I can't kick this. And um, TJ was on the wing at the time. <laughs> and me, Bender and and TJ were around um, Stephen Lewis who had the kicking tee. Yeah. Grab the tee. Get out of here, boys. <laughs> 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 so like um, uh, one of the boys put someone straight under the post and it's oh, like right 79th right. minute. So like, I put the tee down and I like I grabbed the tee and Bender and TJ are like, oh, no, I just walk off. Yeah. I grabbed the ball and I set it up. But I set it up like sort of 11 metres back, not far. Yeah. The game's over. We're beating Aussie second test by like 20. And then Drew Mitchell and Adam Ashley Cooper are going to try to charge me. And I've gone quite far back. <laughs> and I've gone, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm sort of like, they're like fully. And I'm like, they're going to charge me down. And I just like quickly come and bang. Like, yeah, got it. Oh, and I'm so happy. But yeah. <laughs> Because my goal kicking record at Super Rugby is 0 and 3, and it, one of them's heroic. <laughs> that was one of Lima's questions, actually. What's your goal kicking <laughs> record at, um, at the Landers? So. <laughs> uh, he he <laughs> won't let it go. I wouldn't have to kick it if he didn't get Simbin. <laughs> yeah, him trying to shoulder charge oh. Slady. Nice, nice Lima. Where was your kick from? Where were your kicks from? Nah, they were. One was uh, another. Tony Brown, our coach now, was trying to jack a little ruck in Invercargill. Got penalised third in a row. Yeah. So I, we scored a try against the Brumbies. 15, left side, just scraped the right upright. Oh. And then um, same one, we scored five minutes later. We actually went better without him on the field, which is funny. <laughs> and then it was on the other, other, other 15 that went left this time, just. And then there was the famous one in uh, Dunedin. Uh, in, Christchurch where I try to use the whole two minutes or long as yeah. and then I could actually see myself on the screen behind the thing <laughs> and it doesn't go any higher than the crossbar like it's a shocker so you know I can, hit, I can hit a goal kick now I know how to mentally goal kick like I can just get up there 
trust my kick, bang it. Yeah. Whereas back then it was like a whole lot, but now I could actually, I could hit one near the sticks and I'll go, it'll go near the sticks, you know? Yeah. But I'm older now and I've kicked a lot. So I'm like, okay, but back then it was like, uh oh, I need to take up the whole time. I'm taking my time. And then it, I don't even think it makes the, like, goes, yeah, and nearly hits Crocky or someone in the head. And then it's like a worm burner and they pick it up and start countering. It doesn't even make the like deep ball or anything. <laughs> oh, the penalty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's bad, man. Oh, oh, I love that stuff. <laughs> oh, but anyway, you've had a really successful All Blacks career. So um, what games stand out for you? Obviously, you're a World Cup winner. That must be pretty special and right, right up there. Yeah, there's, um, I think there's random games that stand out. Like um, 2013, we had like the game of games in Johannesburg and Ellisburg, uh, Ellis Park. And... Uh, that was like one of the hardest games I've ever played. Um, 2013, beating Ireland on the Hooter. Like, yeah. That last passage of play, like, it's still something I'll never remember. Like, finding the energy in the 80th minute was just like end of a year. I like watch me, in that, I've watched that clip a lot. And when I feel tired and then I go watch it. But um, then, um, what else is there? But yeah. The whole World Cup 2015 was outstanding. Um, but looking back on it, just like the legends I got to play with, they like, you don't know it at the time as a young fella, you just ride in the wave. And when I look back, I looked at that team photo a little while ago when I was working out, um, going through my um, photos and that. And like the guys in that photo are like legends, are they? So I'm grateful for that. And then obviously missing out on the World Cup last year and not winning and, or failing kind of makes you appreciate like 2015 and winning because yeah. it does come down to like pressure moments and like say the semi last year and the semi in Africa when we played them like we nailed our moments in the African one and we didn't in the England one you know so yeah it's just it's hard man like it's hard because yeah but hey um yeah just I'm very lucky. I've won a lot of games with All Blacks, played some awesome players. You know, games for me too, like I said, around uh, wanting people to do well, like Bodie in 2018 against Australia. Like, seeing that is yeah. still up there for me. Um, you know, like him scoring all those points, all those tries, like, that stuff's cool. Um, I don't know, like, the quarterfinal, I mean, the bronze medal game, me and Bender did like a trick move around the blind and it was like, I still think it's the best pass I've ever thrown in a game. Like, I throw this blind pass, which Steve Hansen came up with. He's like, we're going to do this trick move around the back of the line out and then just throw it to the space and the winger will, um, Bender will find it or whatever yeah. wing it is. Yeah. I was like, okay. And I've literally just like thrown it, hoping. And Bender's just like hit it like a bat out of hell and then fends two dudes and scores and I'm just like, goes ballistic but yeah it's it's weird but um yeah I'm really grateful for my time in the all black jersey it's a amazing team to be a part of lucky i've been lucky injury wise too i'll touch wood now um and it just that's just what it, it's why you play and that's why i play now and um being a father and um that it just making those memories of luca like i had luca at eden park for the um, test, they uh, I think one of the better games I've ever played. Um, the quarter against Ireland, um, yeah. Luca was in the stands, and like I just got real emotional about it. And um, it was silly because all the I went up to see Luca and Tegan, and all the Japanese like mauled us, all like came over and yeah. kind of freaked Tegan out. And Luca was small, and I was quite worried, so we didn't bring him to another game, but. He was there for that one, and I was. That'll be a moment I'll never forget. And I was able to chuck the Luca up for my boys, so okay. getting a try, so I was happy. Yeah. So that'll be things I'll cherish. But yeah, I hope it's not done for me. I I feel like I've got a lot to offer, and I want to kind of um, see how long I can go. And um, you know, the the jersey demands you to be the best you can be, and that's just sort of how I sort of approach every day now. Yeah, and you've obviously kept your um, you've obviously been the regular nine in the in the All Blacks starting jersey. 
um, with a lot of comp- competition from one of the most competitive guys I've ever played with, TJ. So talk to me about your relationship with him and um, how that sort of goes. Yeah, TJ's, um, oh man, he's, uh, like you say, competitive. He's feisty character. Yeah. But um, we get on really well. We obviously got a really good working relationship and, and uh, um, competitive one. But um, I can't compete with him in a lot of things. As you know, he's strong as, if not the fittest dude on the field, he's one of them. And he just, he's good at everything, mate. Yeah. You know, any sport, anything, basketball, we played a bit, golf, <laughs> whatever, I'm pretty sure he could be good at. And, um, you know, we get on really well off the field. We're um, both fathers now and stuff like that. And we've grown up together, really. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm being very lucky. I guess there were some points there in my all-black career where people probably thought TJ was better or playing better and Steve maybe chose me and used him as that impact role. But, um, yeah, man for man, we both have always just respected who we We always saw it as one-two punch. That's what we say to each other. Whoever gets the job, the guy comes on and finishes it, you know, with the, the second punch. So that's yeah. how we see it. It's a unit. You know, test rugby, you never see a guy play 80 anymore. It's always 60th minute, speed the game up, bring a guy on. And uh, I think I've just been lucky enough to... Um, get the nod a lot but I'll be honest with you um, I wouldn't be here without TJ because you know in the off season I just think TJ would be training right now get up <laughs> or um, it's weird man like I only see his face but it gets me out of bed you know yeah any um, battles between you and him that stand out at super level oh it would be I remember, oh, I'll be honest, probably not anything that's like outrageous. I remember in the, um, we played each other 2012 in Dunners and um, he like stepped around the ruck, fended a guy, had me to go. I went to ball and all of him, like got him good. And then he just goes, get off me, spun, slammed the ball down, try, <laughs> got up, done his normal thing. And I've gone, Jesus you know, I was feeling pretty good and like oh yeah I saw him fend the guy and I was like I'm just going to go bump for here yeah. and uh, he just got rid of me like nothing and um, yeah but nothing halfbacks never get too many run-ins with each other but yeah. I remember making a couple of tackles on him in that final like he was trying to get a second touch and I was just mirroring him like you're not going to score you're not going to score anyway but someone else maybe but <laughs> yeah I remember tackling him once but yeah this year he got me good. He he dummied me. I was that like rock defender, and That's uh, I told our fast I rocked the flow, and he's just gone bang. And I'm gone. I've gone. Oh no! He yelled something you out know, like, too, didn't he? <laughs> you could see uh, it. He, he, he did like what a, what a, whatever. But you know he plays the game like that, and yeah. I scored later on, and yeah, yeah, yeah right. it was all good, one all. But um, yeah, it cracks me out the old. Uh, yeah, we're just halfbacks, man. We just go hard. And, yeah. Um, but with all of them in, in my career and the All Blacks around, you know, Pity, he was competitive. Uh, TKB, that was probably the most competitive group we had. Me, him, and TKB <laughs> was like out the gate, like all in our own ways. Like I was all, all energy. TJ's all energy, vigor, and, and TKB could just hit. Yeah. Outstanding footy player. But if you, at training, like he'd hit you. Like you do a draw and pass, you're getting hit. Like fight your mouth guard. Like the same the same two hand touch he hits. So oh, always loved those battles with both of them. And uh, oh, my middle part of my well, during those sort of 2012 to sort of 15, 16, like every week playing either Andy Ellis, uh, TKB, or TJ, it was like awesome. Yeah, you know. So it was like awesome competitiveness and uh, yeah. Yeah, your body's feeling pretty good now. Have you got Have you got much planned for the for the rest of your future? Yeah, just sort of. I'm trying to talk through uh, maybe hanging around till the next World Cup. So we'll see what happens oh, nice. there. If Ben's at AU or Keen, yeah. I've still got another year on my contract. So um, I feel I feel in great shape, great uh, mind, and uh, obviously um, 
I'm getting married in January and we've got a little boy. So hopefully I try to have another, another baby soon. So um, I preferably like to stay around and, um, you know, I love playing in New Zealand and um, the All Black jersey still drives me every day and that to try and play there. And so I'm playing Highlanders. Is, I'm a passionate about that and uh, a co-captain at that club. So I love, love that. So, you know, who knows? But, um, yeah, like you said about goals and that, like um, now I'm preparing for Super Rugby in my mind and, and ISO and starting to get ready for what's coming. Uh, Bender's on. 154 games, so that's You've my next target. Five more 155. Games. So that's uh, that's how I work, mate. So yeah. all blacks is done. Now I'm trying to get ready for super. So it's on to the next sort of uh, campaign. As you know, it's a bit of a slog, but it keeps you fresh, it keeps you energised. And uh, I think when I run out of things to do or things I feel like I can't achieve, I think I'll, I'll walk away happy. But yeah. Uh, if my body lets me, I will chase everything I can get out of this amazing game. And it's given me a lot. So uh, by no means it's done. But, um, yeah, I'm inspired all the time, you know. Like, yeah. guys like Dane Coles and that, still doing it. Um, yeah, like I said around, you've seen the guys, how much work they put in, the Sam Wylocks, the guys like that. It doesn't just happen, eh? So there's a reason why they've played that many games over that many years and and as an older athlete, you, you follow guys like LeBron, the Ronaldo's, the Messi's. Yeah. And you see what they do. And, you know, as you get older, the game does get easier to play because you've been in so many situations. So yeah, some people may think this is a really hard situation in there, but I've been in a lot. So you can, oh yeah, we're only down by 10 or, you know, whatever the situation or I've been taken out off the ball worse than that or, that was cheaper than that, but you know that's what that's what's exciting. And then just trying to get young guys to enjoy, try help them achieve their goals. You know, that's what I want. I want as many Highlanders to make the All Blacks as possible. You know, yeah. or Turbos to make Super Rugby. Like, I, it's it's why I play as well. And um, you know, I think I owe that to the Highlanders. They gave me my shot. Uh, and you happy with the Highlanders squad that you've got for? The 2021 season. I tell you, I'm happy we got the raging bull back, Liam Squire. It's, oh, uh, that gets me going. So <laughs> happy to see him back. Um, it's been a lot of messages between us all talking and this yeah. and that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Our squad's great. Tony Brown's our coach, and I love playing under him. Something about him ignites my game. Yeah. Um, he just he just challenges me constantly about trying to get better and I love that and uh, it's always into me around my game and what am I seeing what am I feeling what am I uh, executing better and you know Ash Dixon I think said the best year he's been outstanding this year so yeah. uh, I go on the record saying I think he's been the best player in the country so hopefully he gets the kudos for that this year yeah. and uh I really hope he gets um, the accolades he deserves. He's been outstanding. Might have 10 and super. Yeah. I love the old man, Kuro, old Smudgy. Um, so, much love, boy. And, uh, yeah, we've got a great young squad. Um, a good yeah, test. Yeah, guys like... Too. Yeah. Chow's back. Chow yeah, Munger's yeah. back. And, yeah, uh, oh, God, he's going to be intense with the D in this. So, <laughs> uh, that'll be good. He'll bring some energy in that area. I know his uh, ruthless feedback. I wonder if he's got any softer. But, uh, You're going to be I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be trying to get me to be T1 all the time, tackling under the wall. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we got some good, exciting boys, mate. Can't wait. And uh, you know what Super Rugby's like? It's just, um, you know, who's going to have that kind of year? Can you have a young guy as a breakout year, or yeah. is there someone who's just going to just rip up? So, um, yeah. Hard. Well, what a what a journey and what good exciting times ahead. Well, as always, we've gone to the Instagram for some questions. And she's when I get legends on like you, mate, they come flying in, all sorts. Some won't be asked, but um, we've, got a, <laughs> <laughs> we've got a few good ones. Um, who's the best nine you've played against? This was asked ten times, so this was like a real popular question. Everyone wants to know. Uh, it's the guy. 
easy for me. The guy I idolized when I grew up was Fru Dupree from okay. South Africa. Yeah. He is he is the man. And I, he, I watch clips of him before games still. I have like a, I have YouTube premiere and I have it downloaded as highlights video. Oh. Like, that's, he's out the gate, mate. And, um, yeah, I was very lucky to beat him a few times, but, I was, I was, yeah, standing in awe every time I played him. And I've yeah. got his jersey, swapped a couple with him. And, uh, yeah, he's that guy for me. Nice. Um, toughest player to tackle? Uh, Dwayne Van Mullen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, had, I've had some horror stories of him. <laughs> yeah. There's a video of me getting fly squatted. Uh, <laughs> Same same tactic I tried with TJ, the old ball and all. I don't know yeah. why I do it. I'm, I'm going to get this on, guy. And then I just get the big d- 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 oh. and the, you know, the choke slam of death. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. But, um, hey, that's rugby. <laughs> that's rugby. Uh, best advice for a young nine. This one came through a lot too. Pass, pass, pass. Um, pass, 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 yeah keep passing every day and um yeah build a good combo with your team nice solid um is it how did you get your pass so good uh practice and uh just trying to i use my thumbs a lot when right. I pass and these two fingers really so when i pass the ball yeah so i, I, I try to create talk with my wrist so that's my strength, I think. Sure. Favorite basketball from your card collection? Oh, oh favorite basketball uh, card from your collection. Oh, I've got a few goodies. Um, I've got a LeBron James um, PSA 10 rookie card coming. Oh. From, it'll be at home when I get home. So that's a pretty big card. And I've got a um, Spectra RPA of Jason Tatum, one of 25. I'll go get it, actually. Yeah. There it is. Ha oh. ha. So, auto signature, and yeah, it's pretty fat. So, I got I it in Australia, so. I usually have to ask TJ if it, if the cards are worth anything or not, so. <laughs> they are, mate, yeah. But how much time I'm do you I'm a big investor. That? Yeah, he said you're I'm a, a big investor in uh, his company, but I've tried to pull back. I've narrowed my vision. Yeah. So I'm, uh, you're supposed to just pick a guy and chase him. So during lockdown, I just bought everything I could get my hands on, which was bad. <laughs> so I've, I've sold a lot of cards to um, yeah, get my bank balance back to even, which has been good. Um, and now I just chase Jason Tatum. Yeah. I think he's going to be the next guy. Eh? So that's who I'm chasing. And, uh, and LeBron's. So LeBron's are so hard to get. Yeah. And now he's just won a chip it. They've gone even more expensive. So I sold about yeah, a few grand worth of cards to buy one that one LeBron oh. rookie card. So but that card will go up. So you can't lose on LeBron. He's just too good, you know. Sounds good. Sounds like a good investment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh thoughts on Falau Fakatava. Unreal. He's uh he's a wizard. Um and he's coming. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, I might have to change my vision to Palau getting me up in the morning. So, GC <laughs> GC played well and uh, might attend, didn't he? So, yeah. uh, nah, he's he's yeah, athletically, um, his game understanding's growing, and uh, his ability to to play ball off ad lib is out the gate. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to watching the Maldives um, Moana Pacifica game. So, I'll be watching and. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a great player and he's a great kid and yeah, that's good stuff. And this is, leads on to the other one. Now that TJ's gone to the Canes, would you ever move up there? <laughs> no, they didn't want me in two thousand and eight, <laughs> nine, or ten or eleven. So um, no. Yeah. And uh, I grew up a Hurricanes fan, no it's, doubt. Yeah. Tana, Kali, Jonah. You know, I love the man on it. Loved it. Went to big games there, but hey, we all find our way. Um, no hate there. Just um, I used to be a bit like that, but not anymore. Just 
Um, when guys move teams and stuff, but uh, if I can, I would definitely try and be a one club man. Uh, and I'm sure you will. Um, best coach you've had and why? Ooh, tough. Um, Jamie Joe. Around his way, he challenged me to be the best. And uh, the way he saw the game and the way he approached it mentally he challenged me a lot around my preparation. And he just had a big heart. He knew how to talk to me and get the best out of me um, somehow. So any time I see him, we have like two types of catch-ups. We have like a chill catch-up, have a feed and stuff. Yeah. And then we have like a rugby one and he's really brutally honest with me around what he sees. And anytime I really, and I think I know when I try to call him is when I think I need a bit of a reboot or a bit of honesty, you know? Yeah. So he knows that. So he just gives it to me. And uh, yeah, and, uh, I just owe him a lot. He gave me my chance. Eh? So um, I think that feeling of him will always be there. That's cool. Last question. How'd you get your nickname, Nuggy? Oh, um, nickname Muggy, 2007, I played club rugby at Field and Yellows and um, we had a Fijian captain, he was a big Fijian guy and he said, uh, I scored a couple of tries in my debut and we won big and he goes, I'm very lucky we have the golden nugget, Aaron Smith and I had to come up and do a handle. Oh, true. <laughs> you know, you players of the day. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. other guy. Yeah. Oh, wasted. We played a farming, farming team, and this guy just ate the jug. Yeah. Uh, ate the handle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was that like golden. It was gold, just golden nugget, and then it was nugget, and then just the typing down to nuggy. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. take a good nickname early. Yeah. Oh, I've been blessed. <laughs> There's some shockers out there. <laughs> You've come up trumps there. And you've come up trumps in your career and it's been awesome to hear um, your pathway from when you're young and going through your journey. I, I've loved watching your career progress from that under-19s camp, seeing how you've done it, go through all the teams, all the way to the top, the absolute pinnacle of the game. Um, 97, 95 caps for the All Blacks, 150 for the Highlanders. It's just massive achievements and um Really, really enjoyed watching your career and um, thanks for coming on the Waterlab podcast. Cheers, Jimmy, Mark. Awesome, bro. Big fan. Thanks, mate.